This is the Stars and Stripes and Seven, your online source for editorially independent news and information for the U.S. military community. I'm Lamont Easter. The Air Force in England is still deciding whether to change its coronavirus policies after the British government ends a mask mandate and relaxes other rules. These changes apply to England only and local government legislation may vary in Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Though some coronavirus policy updates are expected, there haven't been any yet at Royal Air Force Mildenhall 100th Air Refueling Wing. A command memo applying to all Royal Air Force Mildenhall Airmen states that U.S. personnel are required to follow U.K. guidance unless the rules in the memo are more restrictive. The rules include wearing masks and continuing to maintain a social distance of six feet when indoors and outdoors for those who haven't been fully vaccinated, with few exceptions. Guidance also remains the same at Royal Air Force Lakenheath, where masks are required at the post office, dining and lodging facilities, and at the fitness center, except for people who are actively exercising. The Carl Vinson and Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Groups began dual carrier operations in the South China Sea recently. The Navy said in a statement that an F-35C Lightning II fighter jet assigned to Carrier Air Wing II was landing on the USS Carl Vinson during routine flight operations when the pilot ejected and was recovered by a U.S. military helicopter. The F-35 pilot is in stable condition. During the landing mishap, six other sailors were injured. Three sailors required medevac to a medical treatment facility in Manila, Philippines, and are listed in stable condition. Four sailors were treated by onboard medical personnel, and three of those sailors have been released. The Navy states that the cause of the crash is under investigation. The guided missile destroyer USS Samson is continuing to assist with disaster assessment and relief efforts for the remote islands of Tonga ravaged by a volcanic eruption and tsunami. The destroyer has joined ships and aircraft from France, Australia, New Zealand, Japan and others in delivering water, food and other relief to Tonga. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, which monitors atomic tests, stated the eruption was larger than any nuclear detonation ever recorded. The undersea eruption of the volcano sent tsunami waves across the Pacific and a massive amount of ash into the air. A layer of thick volcanic ash covered many of the 169 islands that make up the Kingdom of Tonga, which lies about 1,000 miles east of Australia. Only 36 of those islands are inhabited, with roughly 70% of the Polynesian nation's population of 105,000 living on the main island of Tonga Tapu. The tsunami severed the only fiber optic cable that connects Tonga to the rest of the world. The U.S. Navy recently moved sailors aboard its newest base, a strategic installation in northern Poland that will support NATO's European missile defense system. The U.S. Sixth Fleet said in a statement that personnel completed their move from off base into a $50 million multi-purpose residential building at Naval Support Facility Regikovo. The Naval Support Facility Regikovo supports the Aegis Ashore Missile Defense System. It integrates the systems of Navy destroyers based in Rota, Spain and, and the Aegis capabilities at Naval Support Facility de Veselu, Romania, the Navy said. The two-story multi-purpose facility was built by the Corps of Engineers and completed in June 2020. It includes a gym, barracks, a galley, medical facilities, a Navy exchange, and a recreation center. Rooms house up to four sailors and include dorm-style accommodations. Citing operational security, the Navy would not say how many personnel were assigned to the base or provide further details about the installation size or structure. U.S. personnel stationed in Germany and any others who received only the single Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 shot are no longer considered fully vaccinated under federal German rules. Only people with three shots will be considered boosted. Defense Department personnel who had the initial J&J &J shot 
also known as Janssen, won't be able to get a third shot on a U.S. base. Military personnel in Germany who received J&J &J shots may receive third shots off base, but it's unclear whether they would be blocked by their units or whether a third vaccination would be accepted by U.S. health agencies. Unvaccinated people in Germany in many states cannot visit non-essential retail stores, but can shop for food and go to the doctor, among other tasks deemed necessary. Those who are fully vaccinated but not boosted typically must show proof of a negative antigen test taken within 24 hours or a PCR test no older than 48 hours for non-essential shopping or to visit venues like movie theaters. Special issuance passports will soon be the only option for Defense Department civilians and dependents boarding Patriot Express flights bound for Germany, Japan and South Korea. A waiver allowing tourist passport holders to take the government contracted air service for a permanent change of station or PCS ends March 31st, according to an update last year to the DOD's Foreign Clearance Guide. After that, no fee official passports will be required. To obtain a waiver, an application for a no fee passport must be submitted to the applicant's base passport office. The no-fee passport requirement is expected to cause a high volume of requests at base passport offices during peak permanent change of station season, May through August. Passport processing times will vary by location, according to the Marine Corps' Pentagon-based security programs and information management branch. Applicants should allow six to eight weeks for their no-fee passport to be issued. Active duty personnel are still able to board flights without a passport and enter those countries with just their military ID and travel orders. And that is all for this edition of Stars and Stripes and 7. I'm Lamont Easter, helping you stay connected.